knew that this machine needed two new fans the damage is pretty easy to see but does anyone see the damage on this old original spider doesn't seem to be damaged until you look real close right here this has literally been melted or chewed you say well eh, what's the big deal with that the problem is height this is, well, not very tall. See where that is compared to my finger? Okay, and here is a new one. Believe it or not, that's a huge, huge difference. So I hope you can see that. Of course, this is, uh, you know, uh, round, smooth. This is uh, kind of <laughs> squared off, eaten away. This is one of the last to my knowledge, spiders that you can actually get. When I went on like Rainback's website and eBay, Google, you name it, there literally was one seller on eBay and they had two of these spiders. You can see the, the part number there, just barely. And yeah, I don't think you can get these parts anymore. So if you need them, Good luck finding them. But now we have a part that fits. Because what happens is this spider has to go on this assembly. And here's the old one. Listen to what happens. 
So there's resistance there because this part is rubbing against this ring. When I put the new part on, it kind of pushes itself out a little bit farther away and now you actually have proper spacing. See? Now it's not rubbing against the ring at all. Damaged one. New one. Oh yeah. That is great sounding. And look how shiny the commutator is. Three new bearings and new spider, two new fans. And I think this motor's ready to go again for a long time. Can't forget the fan. Motor needs its little hat. Let's see, we got it going on there, get it threaded. And there we go. Now, after all that, we're basically done with the canister. Now, the last thing you would do is put this big gasket back in and use some type of adhesive. And I will do that, but I'm going to do it at a later date. But just to make people feel better, I'll just kind of put it right there and tap it in. But know that I will actually do this at a later date. I've got some additional longer term testing to do with this and I don't want to seal that gasket because it's, well, it's so, it's so fragile, although it's still in pretty good shape. I don't want to be putting it in and then having to take it back out again if something goes funny. So I'd like to test it for a few hours. One of these rainbow power nozzles needs some weather stripping. Here's a weather stripping job. 
I did a number of years ago on my newer PN, and Thomas's need some. So believe it or not, I dug in my stash, and I found the same weather stripping sitting there for probably about the last five years, waiting to be used to do something. So let's get some weather stripping on this so we can uh, get a seal around here, and there, and there. If you were wondering how I managed to get this foam uh, divider, I hesitate to call it a seal, in the motor area here, to kind of match this one. Uh, this is one of the last ones I know that you could actually get, and I got mine like six or seven years ago. Anyway, I got some air conditioning weather seal here. This is what it looks like. It's kind of squishy. Sliced it in half, and then just kind of shaped it, and then glued it. Okay, so I think Thomas's power nozzle is all ready for its maiden voyage. So you gotta get the wheels aligned here. Everything is very squishy to be sure, but that's a nice fresh seal. Two seals, matter of fact, I guess, call it that. Now since the canister part is done, we can run this as a complete system. All right, there we go. Now since the refurbishment's done on his 1989 here on the left, he wanted to know if there was a difference between airflow and suction between the really old separator that's in there and the much newer one over there. That's from my 1997. So let's find out. Okay, we'll do suction first. I'll just have to call that out. You won't be able to see it. Okay. The suction gauge says 62, and that might be the highest number I've ever tested. Let's see, I'm gonna get low, Let's see, feet per minute, and then get the maximum, okay. Hopefully you can see that. Got my <clears throat> calculator here to convert it. I don't bring this gauge out all that often anymore because I have my other one. <clears throat> and the reason why I bring this out is because this vein perfectly fits this opening. I mean, it's just perfect. We got a peak of 35.43, then multiply it to 0.99. We have an airflow of 92. Point, I'll say 92.5 CFM. Now I'm going to switch the separator from here and put this one in. This is the old separator. 1997 separators in here. Let's see what happens. OK, 
Okay, with the newer separator, we're down about two inches to 60 inches of lift. So now let's see what the airflow is. All right, down on peak. Away we go. See, 3543. Was that an appreciable difference? 026099. And I have 92.46. So 92.5 CFM. Hey, 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 hey. Give me some light here. There you go. 92.5. So interestingly enough, the suction with the older original unit about two inches higher and the airflow is exactly the same so the question is would I change to the newer separator and the answer is no uh, but if you did and that's all you had because you couldn't get the old style anymore I wouldn't worry about it because your airflow is the same and you only lost two inches of suction